Hey folks, uh, this lesson is perpendicular bisectors of triangles. So this is uh, module 23 in our book. We're going to be needing a compass for this lesson. So uh, and if you don't, then you can just kind of watch. Okay, so, so remember an upside down capital T means perpendicular. And instead of writing the word triangle, I'm just going to put a little triangle here uh, symbol here. So this says perpendicular bisectors. Bisectors means uh, it's in the middle, it bisects, it cuts it in half, something like that. Okay. Don't forget all your lessons can be found at MrMathLog.com and then make sure this is an integrated math one link. Okay. So our question here is how can we use perpendicular bisectors to find the point that, whoops, there should be an A in there, that is equidistant from all the vertices. Okay. So all right, I don't think I need to worry about that right now. From all the vertices of a triangle. Okay, so here we go. So some definitions, you guys. And so um, instead of writing out the word circle, we're going to draw a little circle and put a dot in the middle so it doesn't look like the letter O or the number zero. So there's a circle here. So a circle that contains all the vertices of a polygon is circumscribed about the polygon. So here, you guys, we have circle C uh, circumscribes triangle uh, X, Y, Z right there, okay? And then, uh, so since it, this circle is circumscribing the triangle, it is called the circumcircle of the triangle right there. And that point C is called the circumcenter about the triangle right there, okay? So the circumcenter, it comes from the perpendicular bisectors of a triangle. And so where the perpendicular bisectors all intersect in the same spot. So if we drew the perpendicular bisector of this side, um, uh, it would go right up through the middle, perpendicular, and we draw the perpendicular bisector of this side, and it would go this way, and it would intersect. They'd intersect at point C, okay? So that's what we're going to do is construct that. So go ahead and get your compass ready in a straight edge. And we're going to construct the circumcircle here. So here we have, go ahead and uh, make an obtuse, uh, looks like a scalene triangle. None of the sides are equal, and you have this obtuse angle in here. So I did an obtuse triangle so we can see what's happening right here. And then the first thing we do, you guys, is um, remember that the circumcenter, our center of our circumcircle, that's going to circumscribe this triangle right here, <laughs> Um, it comes from the perpendicular bisector. So let's go ahead and construct the perpendicular bisectors of each side. And, and I think you've done this before. And if you haven't, it's no problem. It's pretty easy. So we're going to go ahead and pick up our compass right here. And what I'm going to do, let me get make sure I'm in. I'm going to do this with blue. Yeah. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is um, uh, go put the pointy over here on point uh, B right there. Okay, and what we're going to do is arc this above the triangle and below the triangle. Okay, so right somewhere, and you just got to make sure it's you got to make sure the compass is opened up more than half the distance. I like to do at least you know three fourths of the distance right there. It just has to be more than half. Otherwise, our arcs won't meet each other. So so I'm going to go ahead and arc it up here, and then I'm going to take the same compass opening. It has to be. Whoops, I'm going to do it on the bottom too. Let's go down here and do it down here. It's got to be on top and on bottom, okay? So there it is from point B. And then we take that compass setting, whatever the compass setting is, and we use the same opening, and we go over here and do the same thing, okay? So I'm going to uh, arc it over here. Make sure it has to intersect so it arcs there. And then I'm going to go down here and arc it here. And then now I pick up my straight edge. I'm going to pick up a ruler. And I'm going to connect them from here to here, okay? So you'll see I did that right there, okay? And then I'm going to do the same thing from uh, another segment. I'll do it from A, B over here, okay? So I'll do this in red. Let me get red right here, okay? And, I, and, and so I don't get my arcs confused, you guys. I'm going to open up my compass a little bit more because otherwise when I do it from this point again, it's going to get me the exact same arc as, as that one. Okay, so let me show you. If I if I put the pointy right there and had the same compass, it's going to give me that same arc right there, and I don't want to have that same arc. Okay, so let me open up the compass a little bit more, just so we can distinguish. Um, uh, it's going to be a different one. Okay, so uh, let's see. So now it's going to be a different arc right here. So this one's going to be in red. I'm going to arc it on this side, and then go down over here and do the same thing over there. I'm going to arc it on this side. And whatever that compass opening is, 
we take it, don't open or close the compass anymore. I'm going to take it and do the same thing from this side right here. Okay, and then so I'm going to arc it, um, uh, uh, put an arc right there, and then do the same thing over here. I'm going to take it over there and do another arc right there. And then you'll see that I did that, uh, probably a different compass opening, but it should be, oh, I'm sorry. So so what we did, let me back up here, you guys. When we did this first one, we created a perpendicular right angle right there, bisector. It made uh, BC cut in half, so this piece equals this piece, okay? Then I did my red arcs right there, so there's my uh, right there, connected it with the straight edge, so I made another perpendicular it made a nice right angle and it looks like a right angle and this side equals this side right here all right so this point right here is that I, I can do it again with side AC I can put the, the pointy right here and arc it up here and arc it down here and put the same compass opening arc arc and what would happen is when I created the perpendicular bisector it's going to go through where these two guys intersected so you only need to do two of them because you know it's going to intersect in that same spot and that point right there is going is our circum uh, center of our circum circle. So, um, so that means that this is a radius. Let me see. Do I want to keep going? Yeah. Okay. So the radius, you guys, is uh, PA and PB and PC. It's going to make the perfect circle. Now my circle goes off a little bit. Let's get green. I'm going to make the green circum circle right here. Let me uh, grab my compass and put pointy over here. Let me switch it around so I can grab it. Okay, and keep going around. Anyways, so I'm going to go ahead and create uh, this circum circle uh, by making sure that it goes through point A and once it or B or C because once it goes through one of them, it's going to go through all of them because it's the same radius of the circle. So let me close it just a little bit so right about there okay now watch I'm gonna make a circle it's gonna go through B because it's the same radius it's gonna go through C it's the same radius these perpendicular bisectors gives me the center of the circle that goes through all the vertices of that triangle so if I just go around it's gonna hit all of them right there okay so it went off the chart let me show you. There it is right there. I slid it down right there. So there's our circumcircle right there, okay? Do you see how the, the circumcenter, the point P, is outside the triangle? Well, okay, sometimes it's outside the triangle, like this one here. Sometimes the circumcenter is outside the triangle. Sometimes it's inside the triangle. So here's one where it's constructed inside the triangle. Sometimes it's right on the triangle. So if you were in my class, we did an activity of paper folding. Uh, which would have been the, the day before this lesson, which would have been on in this class. It was a Friday, so what happened, today's Monday. Well, you guys are watching this, so anyway, so sometimes it's on the triangle. When it's outside the triangle, that's because it was an obtuse triangle. When it's inside the triangle, it's an acute triangle. And when it's on this triangle, let me get rid of this here. Let me close that out. When it's on the triangle, that was when it was a right triangle right there. Okay. All right, so three or more lines that intersect in the same point are concurrent. So the perpendicular bisectors are concurrent to each other, and that point is called the point of concurrency. Okay, so the circumcenter theorem says this, that the circumcenter that's formed by the perpendicular bisectors is equidistant to the vertices of the triangle. And here, it's just the, it's just the radius. So this is my radius right there from PA to PB to PC. If I didn't close my uh, compass out, I'd show you that I can create uh, the circum circle that would go around that right there, okay? So P is the uh, our circum center because it's formed by the perpendicular bisectors, the right angle and they're bisecting the right angle and it's making this side equal to that side right there. So it's the circum center, okay? So all those radii are equal to each other. PA equals PB. This says the length of PA equals the length of PB. This equals the length of PC right there, okay? So notice the right angles. Don't forget about the Pythagorean theorem and we're going to see some P triples. So do you see this right triangle right here? I can get P triples out of this right triangle. I can get P 
P triples out of this one, out of this one also. So don't forget about those P triples. So 3, 4, 5 is a P triple, 5, 12, 13. It just means that 5 squared plus 12 squared equals 13 squared. 8 squared plus 15 squared equals 17 squared. 8, 15, 17, 7, 24, 25. These are all P triples right there, okay? And if you multiply them times 2, 3 times 2 is 6, 4 times 2 is 8, 5 times 2 is 10. 6, 8, 10 is a P triple. So is 10, 24, 26. So is 16, 30, 34. So is uh, 14, 48, and 50 if I multiply them by 2. You can multiply them all by 3s if you want. Okay, so we're going to use that here. These are all the perpendicular bisectors of triangle GHJ, okay? So, um, and so the perpendicular bisectors, that means that that's the circumcenter uh, right there, which just means that this uh, segment equals this segment equals this segment, because they're just the radius of the, the circle. So use that information to find the length of each segment, and these pictures are not drawn to scale. Okay, so this says ZM equals 7, so I'm going to go ahead and put a 7 right there. ZJ is this guy, equals 25. Okay, and then HK, where's HK? So HK equals 20. Let's go ahead and put those in right there. Okay, it says find ZH. Okay, ZH is a radius of the circle, which is going to be equal to that one right there. And then HG, well, HG is this side right here. Well, let's just explain them one at a time. So those radii are equal. I shaded them in blue right there. They're all 25, so ZH equals 25. Easy enough. And the other part is, since it's a perpendicular bisector, that's the midpoint. So that side's 20, that side's 20, making the whole piece 40 right there. Okay, let's do that with another one here. And Oh, yeah, let me back up here. Notice the P triples right here, okay? This is 7, 24, 25. You don't need to know that right there, but if, it, if for later, you guys, this is a... This is um uh this is three times five, this is four times five, this is five times five, this is a three, four, five P triple. So if I needed that length, it would be 15 right there. Okay, all right, so I don't have enough information to get anything over here. I need one of these other ones right here. Okay, anyways, it's not asking for that, it's just for later in case you need that. P triples happen a lot. Okay, ZH equals 85, MZ equals 13, HG equals 136. Okay, let's plug that in right there. Picture is not drawn to scale. It says find KG. Okay, so KG is right here. Remember, that's the midpoint, so it's going to be half of that 30, 130. Okay, so it's 68 right there. Okay, find ZJ. Okay, ZJ is a radius of the circle that would go all the way around. So it's going to be equal to this radius right there. It's equal to that 85 right there. Okay. All right, so I didn't see any P triples on that one right there. Okay, so it says here in the right triangle, uh, angle D is the circumcenter. So that's the center of the circumcircle that's going to go through that vertice, that vertice, and that vertice. Okay, so if CD equals 6.5, what's AB? Well, since it's the circumcenter, then this radius equals this radius equals this radius. So those are 6.5s also. Okay, so. That means uh, that the whole length is going to be 13 right there, okay? So the whole length from A to B is 13. All right, so this last piece says graph the triangle. So let's go ahead and graph those vertices right there. And it says find the circumcenter. Okay, well, I got some, I got a horizontal right here. Did I do the horizontal or the vertical first? Okay, I got a vertical right here. So it's easy to find the midpoint. It's right there. And to find the perpendicular, it goes this way. Okay, and then on this horizontal, it's easy to find the midpoint right here. You just count. There's six going across, so count three. One, two, three and it's perpendicular so it's going to be this vertical it's going through right there so if we construct that so there's um that perpendicular bisector here's that perpendicular bisector and they intersect right there at 2 2 so that's the circumcenter right there okay all right, so by the way, uh, with a right triangle, the circumcenter is always on the hypotenuse. If it's a right triangle, and it is, when these figures that you're going to do, it's always right there on the, on the hypotenuse. So find the midpoint, go straight over, find the midpoint, go straight down, and then there's your circumcenter right there. All right, if you are in our class, that would be your assignment. Take care.